Hey, welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. Corwin's going to be here in just a little bit. We're going to take all of these clamps off, and then he is going to route out the rest of this body for his Racing Stripe Telecaster body. Got curly maple, got wenge, got some birch in there actually, and then we've got some mahogany on the back. So I think he's excited to see what it's going to look like after today. Thanks for coming. Hope you enjoy it. If you like anything you see, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. as long as I have a cool guitar by the end of this. All right, guys, I have brought you back out to Jim Mishy's place. This is his shop, his shed. Jim's the kind of guy that you really like as a friend. Now, he is a great guy, and I like him truly as a friend, not just for his stuff, but Jim's the kind of guy that, so Jim has microwave ovens that he has turned into spot welders. Jim has worked on building and putting together his own handmade 3D printer. He's that type of guy. So he's kind of a whiz when it comes to putting stuff together, but he's also got some great tools that I don't have. And he is so friendly and kind and just allows me to, to use some of his tools. Uh, this is Corwin's um, guitar body blank that we're gonna be cutting. But I wanna make sure that my, my board is flat on both sides so that I can join it together with that mahogany is what we're gonna do. I just wanna show you how we make sure that we're doing that. And we're just taking a pencil and I'm gonna start putting lines across it. I'm not pushing hard because I don't wanna make any indentations. But especially on these edges. I'm just gonna I'm making pencil lines. And what I'm gonna, why I'm doing that is I wanna see the pencil lines disappear evenly so when they're all when all of the pencil line has disappeared we should be pretty well flat this will just help us to be able to see how it is sanding this side i haven't done and as we put that through this big sander you're going to be able to see what i'm looking at and how this helps us to gauge whether or not we're flat. And then we can also take a big square to it and check it as well. that still need to go away. One of the things we're gonna to do today is have Corwin put his two body halves together. He still has to cut out the racing stripe side. He'll be attaching it to the mahogany back. We will glue them together and then he'll be able to cut that out. That's going to be a couple step process because we got, we're going to let that glue set for a few days and then take it apart. But I want to give you just a quick preview of what it's looking like. This is going to be so pretty when he gets it done. I love the curling on this and the racing stripes just look fantastic. The seams are tight. So take a look at this. Here we have the mahogany back. This will be the back side. And actually, this is the center of the back because you have the guitar like this. So this is technically the back. But then look at this. This is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to just dampen it just a little bit so that you can see the curl come out. And uh, at this point, he's, I think he's still trying to decide if there's going to be color added to it or if it's just going to be left natural. But take a look. Oh man, look at the curl on that. Oh. 
Isn't that some beautiful curl on that with those racy stripes in there? And look at the seams. See how tight the seams are we got? Now this here, I'm gonna show you right here. So what we're doing, this actually comes just a little bit like this, is I got that as close as I possibly could to where it will. So that's gonna, there'll be just a little bit of a line there that we'll have to sand out in there. But I've got that so it's right on the edge so that we could utilize the majority of this blank here. And then I've cut them apart, so he'll be cutting this out, attaching them. Absolutely stunning wood. So thanks once again to Cameron over at CW Hardwoods in T South Dakota for providing some really beautiful curly maple and wang game. By the way, this these two lines, that's those are thin lines of birch with a nice straight line. So instead of the curl there, we've got straight line, tight birch there. So maple, wange, birch, wange, birch, wange, maple. We are going to put the two body halves together. So I'm going to start you off by having you cut this out close. And the reason why we're going to cut it out close now is uh, one, obviously we just want to route a little bit. We don't want to route all of this off. The other thing is, is when we are having these two together and we need to clamp them to glue them, uh, we need to be able to have our clamps get in nice and close. And so if we have this sticking out, well, our clamps, depending on some of the clamps, yeah, you know, it's better to just not have all that to deal with. This will actually be going on top of this here, mm -hmm. like that. So, And then we'll take the rest off with the router. Cool. Okay, but actually, we won't take the rest off with the router until after it's actually glued okay. and set. Yeah. Okay? Because we'll be using this as, as our template. template. Okay. For yep. this. So today, right now, all we're going to do is get this cut out. Cool. No, I'm a steady as a shaking light. You know it's real. You know it's real. Can't see the light from the sky in the morning light. Light from the sky This is gonna be going on top of this and getting ready to glue. There's a very important thing that we gotta watch out for though, and that is our center line. If this center line is off, then what's gonna happen is when it comes time to put your bridge on, your strings, because what, what you're wanting to do is make sure that your strings are lined up so you've got string one, two, three. This is in the middle between the string three and four actually, mm -hmm. okay? Because we want that centered. Otherwise it's it's all skewed and your, if your strings are running like this or like yeah. this, you know what I mean? Now I'm exaggerating obviously, but you want them to be centered. And so in order to make sure that everything's centered, we need to know where our center point is at all times. So we're gonna start making some marks. And the way that I'm gonna do that, make sure that everything is lined up there. That center line is all the way here. Okay, now that I've got those on there, the straight edge. So now the important part is I have to come around this corner because once we put this on top of it, mm -hmm. all we're gonna have are these dots on the ends. So you make yeah. a dot, a line that we're able to see right on that edge coming straight down. Okay? Yep. All right. It's visible. Take this glue and we're going to smear this entire side with it, mm -hmm. this entire side, and then we need to center this up. We're going to be able to see where it needs to be there. And just remember that we just, our key points are that we have all of these edges need to be, yep, feels pretty good here. Those would all be on there. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll glue it. And then we're going to clamp like crazy. So there's going to be clamps all the way never around never the enough. whole thing. Okay, right, almost never <laughs> enough. We're always going to put some sort of something under our clamps. Because so it doesn't damage we don't want to damage it. this wood. Yep. Exactly. Uh, and then we'll clamp it all up. Um, but the beautiful thing is, have you ever watched a cooking show? Numerous. Numerous? A few. Have you? A my, few? Not in my free time. Just okay. 
family thing. You know how they like mix up the the dough and stuff, and then yeah. they like go, but the magic of TV. Yeah. And they go pull it out of the oven. <laughs> Underneath a blanket over here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> There we go. Wow. <laughs> it is done. So I will flash back just a moment to me gluing this together and then uh, we'll come back and you can take off all of these clamps. Okay, we're gonna join the two portions of the body together and I just need to line these up with the lines. Um, as I clamp these down, it's gonna slide a little bit. But the other thing is just putting pressure on it isn't gonna get rid of any air bubbles and that type of thing. So we will make sure to just, I'm gonna just do a little bit of this. Move it back and forth, kind of push it around a little bit. And that's gonna get the glue so that it all covers evenly where it needs to. I have got center marks. You can probably barely see them with the camera, but there is a mark here, and there's a mark on this end, center marks. And I am going to have to, boy, as I move this around, and especially as I start to clamp it, I am gonna have to really work at making sure that as I clamp it, that I will clamp it so that these lines are where they need to be. I'm gonna have to keep my eyes on those lines because when you put pressure on it, it will move, it will slide. The only thing that I think about now is typically I will cut this closer to the body uh, before I glue it together just so that my clamps fit better. Maybe I am going to, uh, boy, that's gonna be tough. Let's see if I can get that off. I'll be able to slide it off. Yeah, I might as well keep some of the mess of stuff going with you too. I'm gonna very quickly just cut some of these out with my bandsaw, very, very rapidly, even with the glue on it. Can you believe it? That's some of the knucklehead things that I'm doing. Moisten this up a little bit, bring it back, bring some of that glue black back in, make sure that I got glue everywhere I need. Okay, we'll <laughs> try that again. So I'm gonna make sure that my lines are centered where they need to be. Glued on pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. There, oh, we, go. there we go. Let's say it shouldn't be too bad. All right. So look at that. That's going to be Maybe. really pretty, actually. And then what we're going to be doing is using this as our template, and we'll go route off the rest of this, and you'll be able to see your guitar body. Cool. cool. Yeah. All right. So let's go up and out. Good. Now, you noticed doing this wasn't quite as easy as when you were doing the mahogany. No. You probably noticed it was like a little jerky. Yeah, I noticed little, this spot. Yeah, there's a spot there, but that's gonna, that'll yeah. sand out. <laughs> the maple is a lot harder wood. Yeah, yeah. And so the bits, we go slower. We don't take quite as much out of it if possible. Mm -hmm. 
And so, all right, now we're going to turn it around. Oh, yeah, so you cut. Oh, so I see. It, it's not cutting all the way. So yeah, even natural where you, you know, even if you were to just to put clear coat on it, it'd be beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got blue stain and red stain and yellow stain and basically any color you come up with. Green. <laughs> yep. It sure looks a lot like wood. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I like the one. Oh, Corwin pretty much has his body blank put together and it looks really good. And our seams are nice and tight there. He's gonna take this home and he's gonna start working on sanding in here, which is gonna be, that's kind of the pain area to sand uh, in kind of in these places. Just sand those up. But we do have a little spot that kind of chipped out here in the wange, right on the edge here. And so we are going to see about fixing that. Now there's a couple of things here. One, he's still trying to decide if he's going to do a binding on the edge, which if we put a binding there, that might help cover some of that. Or if we round the edges, that would help cover. When I was sanding and cutting these, I saved some of the Wenge dust. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the Wenge dust in a bowl here. And I'm going to mix a little glue in. Looks like uh, chocolate chip Oreo cookie dough stuff. My magnifiers always help me here, otherwise I'm struggling. Okay, so I'm just going to work some of this into this little dip in here. Try to push it down good and hard. And then obviously we'll let it dry. And then just sand that, we'll be sanding that off. Then when it's sanded off, that hole should be filled. And we might have to do like two coats because the, the stuff will shrink just slightly. And I'm going to leave just a little bit of extra on it. I think I've got to push down pretty good. Let that dry at least overnight, maybe even two days. And then you can sand that off too. Okay. Just make sure you're not rounding these corners. No. Nope. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we've done for now. Filled in the little little chips, and we overdid it. So there's a little extra there, and then he'll just sand this off. There you go, buddy. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time. Corwin's gonna give the outro. I'm trying it. <laughs> He's like, bye! Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, that's all folks. <laughs>